Hello, welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk. This is the show where I find an expert to answer your questions. And in this episode, we're gonna be talking about clouds, not the kind that rain, the kind that compute. And to help me do that, we have Robin Chang. Robin, welcome Hello. to the show. Hi, hi Alex. Robin works in product marketing for Via Technologies and he is well versed in all things cloud and so that's what brings him here with us today. So Robin, what is a cloud? For cloud, it's actually a bunch of servers that are uh, processing, that are storing your data, which you don't have to know uh, how exactly they work. Right. You connect to the, the internet and then you access your files and it does all the computing for you. Somewhere in the world, theoretically, there is a supercomputer, just really powerful computers stacked on top of each other in a probably a well-protected building. Everything on the internet has to be stored somewhere, right. right? So when we say cloud, you could argue that the whole internet is a cloud, right? right? But when we're, what we're referring to uh, with AWS in mm -hmm. our case, is a cloud that we can actually tap into and use, right? Right. So those are those are computers that are probably far more powerful than what we can purchase, mm -hmm. and we're allowed to just use them. Is that right? So uh, uh, cloud itself contains the storage and processing and transmission parts. Normally, when we're doing cloud, um, we're uploading data to the storage, mm -hmm. and then. In the back end, a lot of services would try to analyze and process these data and then uh, pump up the results that uh, a particular person wants, or, uh, wants to, to see or right. are interested in. So why even bother investing in such powerful computers that are localized anymore? Why, not, why don't we just use clouds for everything? Uh, so that's the trend right now, that everything is moving from a localized, private computer computing thing, uh, which many people can't afford of, right. uh, towards cloud. So if you had a site before, you would have to manage your own database, you would have to manage your own uh, back end, front end, and then right. all storage. the storage, all the communications, all the networking, all the this and that that you have to understand it clearly and then manage it yourself. So, so for cloud, you move this to a third party service that it automates most of the things for you. You just have to worry about how you get it on the cloud and tell the cloud how you want things to be processed and then sent back to you. Okay, so I guess it's the natural progress of things. because. You, you mentioned uh, before the internet in the 90s. Right. I remember in like the early 2000s and 90s, if you wanted to have a website, you had to be uh, an expert in the, in like coding and mm -hmm. technology itself. Mm -hmm. You had to understand, you know. Uh, HTML and then JavaScript. Yeah, and, and then also the, the physical stuff, like the, the hard drives and server bays and, you know. And then, of course, uh, website builders came and they kind of took care of a lot of that coding. That you no, know, So, I mean, that's the natural progression. Find something that's hard, make it easier, mm -hmm. sell that as a service. Yes. It did that with website building. Okay, great. Now that part's taken care right. of. And so I guess it's just recently that the technical part of it is also being taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. So now if you want to have a website, you don't have to worry about the coding or dealing with any of the technical aspects necessarily. Correct. Right? Can you think of an example? You, you mentioned the Internet of Things, right? Mm -hmm. IoT. Can you think of an example where IoT is in action? Internet so basically, your phone or like even the newer watches mm -hmm. are Internet of Things um, capable uh, stuff. So think of you have your phone with you and then you um, go to school or you go to your office. It automatically tells you that. Oh, Alex, today's a rainy day. You should right. probably have your uh, umbrella with you. Today's in the 60s, you would have to have your uh, coat with you, something right. like that, because your phone tells the cloud that you are here, what's the date, what's the 
temperature around, it gathers that and then feeds it back to you. Okay, when I think of um, IoT, I usually think of the industrial side, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe, um, maybe there's a, just a sensor mm -hmm. on the ball bearings right. of a conveyor belt, right? Right. And it's just seeing how much heat or if there's any mm -hmm. disruption or the speed of the conveyor belt. But you bring up a good point. Like in my house, I have Google Home. And so the, some of the light bulbs are connected to my Google Home. That's, that's an IoT device. That is. Okay. Or your car could also be an IoT device. Really? So you mentioned about sensors that detect ball bearing um, temperatures and such. Mm -hmm. Actually, your car, especially for newer cars, they have GPS trackers on those. They have temperature sensors on those. They even have crash sensors. So it sounds like as far as clouds are concerned, it's all just pluses. Is there any drawbacks? Like, is there any, like, what's the weak link? I would imagine, uh, maybe internet speed is, what's the weak link as far as using cloud? So for cloud, obviously networking speed is something to be considered. So if you don't have the infrastructure to support such data transmission, obviously cloud wouldn't work. The other thing uh, cloud that people are mo most concerned of is we don't know how data has been re uh, process. Mo some people find themselves offended by right. this behavior because it seems like cloud is listening or looking at what you're doing. Right. Uh, and this is one thing. The other thing is obviously power consumption. So what do you think is next? I mean, there's, we have 5G is slowly rolling out around the world. Um, and I, I imagine in certain situations that will improve the use of cloud, right? What's next for cloud? Will, do you think it's something that will continue to grow or will it uh, become obsolete for the next thing that's just around the corner? The key point for cloud to work is to have decent uh, connection speed, mm -hmm. decent computing speed, and then uh, decent storage. For 5G, obviously there's even 6G that's uh, currently under discussion. Wow. So having these development obviously helps cloud moving faster and faster. And then to shorten the time for uh, and data to be processed and feedback to the user. The other thing is uh, computing. So quantum computers have started to emerge, mm -hmm. although it's still somewhat fantasized right now, but using quantum computing, it'll also speed up the computational time to right. uh, process your data. And then storage, obviously storage is becoming dirt cheap recently right. compared to like 10 years ago. <laughs> have, we, have we built ourselves into a corner? I mean, phones, um, the processors in phones are extremely small and they're impressively fast now. Have we kind of maxed that out and now we have to go to cloud? Or do you think that we'll still be able to make them faster and faster and smaller and smaller? Is there any room left for improvement as far as mobile, um, local processing is it concerned? So if you look at uh, wafer technologies, currently we're going down to even one nanometer or sub nanometer. Um, wow territory. So the chips are becoming smaller and smaller, even more powerful. The storages are becoming denser and denser. So your phone's becoming more and more powerful. Human as a race likes to share our opinions with each other. We like to <laughs> sure communicate yeah. with each other. So in my opinion, cloud would become more and more uh, common mm -hmm. because people like to share what you have with each other. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. As powerful as a local processor might be, it doesn't do anything other than process things right. locally. So that might be great for video editing, uh, maybe not so great for social media. Cool, yeah. Cool, Robin, thank you very much for joining me today. You're welcome. For everyone else, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any comments or questions of your own or suggestions for future videos, put them in the comment section down below. That was another Shop Talk. We'll see you next time.